everyone, my name is Decalink, the trained on professional, and welcome back to Major Minor! On the last episode, uh, it was like an hour long or some shit, and uh, we're really close to the ending, I assume. I really don't know for a fact. We, there could be like 15 chapters, but everyone keeps saying we're really close to the ending, so I don't know what the fuck's going on. But we're going to keep going, and we're going to keep having fun, we're going to keep learning about this strange new world. So, without further fucking do, let's get started. At an earlier time, and in a fit of panic, escapees from the Wayfarer's Tavern hide in the forest. Fearing their lives, they fight to catch their breath. B.B., you need to calm down right now! We did everything we could! It's a miracle we survived! Don't you dare tell me to calm down! Did you not see the same thing I did? They killed my brother thanks to you! That wasn't my fault, P.B. You didn't see what those two could do! It would have been useless to contest them! Please think about this rationally! I am upset more than I've ever been! But I don't, didn't want to add them to the body count. It was your job to protect us, though! You've been doing it for years, Randy! You can't just back down from a fight! PB, I know this is difficult for you, but we'd all be dead if we fought back. They have power like I've never seen. We need to be thankful we escaped. I hope Trish and Kaelin did, too. But trust me, Fidget's not gone yet. They skewered him right in front of us! I held him in my arms before we ran away! How can you say he's not gone?! Pee, Pee fumes with anger, but this time it's justified. Remember what Ryo told us, Pee, Pee William has the ability to fix all of this. Right now we need to focus on survival. This will all blow over soon. And we'll get to see everybody again. Not just Fidget, but your mother too. You really believe that, Ridy? Yes, with all of my heart. I know that William can do this. You're lying. You said we need to focus on survival, but then you said death is irrelevant, especially if William can reverse it. That's why I don't believe you, and why I think Fidget's really gone. You fear death, and you don't want to die. You don't truly believe in William. You don't truly believe in Ryo's words. There's a part of you that knows the truth. Right, he clenches his fists, unsure of what to say. You're holding on to a false hope, just like Fidget's been doing for years. I miss him, Righty. I miss him so much. And it's all your fault! Phoebe leaps at Righty, presumably to attack, but instead he cries and hugs his friend. A fountain of tears runs down his face. I want him back. Right, he embraces PB and starts to cry as well, shedding his first tears since the Exodus project. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot in between episodes that the Wayfarer's Tavern was attacked. What the fuck is this? When I'm open, when I open my eyes, I'm confused by what I see. There's also a weird sensation in the back of my mind. For some reason, I think I see Righty and PB, but in front of me, it's actually a rusty hangar bay. I shake my head in an attempt to gain clarity. After a few moments, I see Nagi approach me. Were Ridey and PB were Ridey and PB in some sort of danger? If that was the case, I'm sure Nagi would know. I'm sorry for the mess, William. This room doesn't get much use. I promise the rest of the ship is clean. The rest of the ship? What does that mean? This is my home, the terminus. Terminus. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. A flagship vessel built by the Federation, seized with force by my own hand. But please follow me, William. This room doesn't better. Build better fit. Yeah, yeah, It's merely an organic landing pad. Organic landing pad? Yes, it's able to transfer living beings, even if there were nowhere near the ship. As you can see, we don't get much company. He laughs, clearly a jab at the dilapidated room. I understand, though. It's like getting beamed up. He must have transferred us both from Terra's surface. I think you'll find this place beautiful. First impressions can be a damning thing. You must have thought I was ugly at first. Without even saying so, he starts to leave the room. I have no choice but to follow him with hesitation. 
I grip my new sword, ready to use it at any time. But when we exit, I see that it truly is beautiful. Whoa! Fucking Matrix shit! Everything is pristine, it's glossy and white. Several computer monitors display incomprehensible data. This technology is so advanced, I, I can barely grasp it. The Federation must be on eons ahead of Earth and Terra. I stare in awe and I walk towards Nagi. He's walking fast, and I don't want to get lost. I have to run to catch up, and his stride is as his stride is much longer. I'm taking you to the bridge. I thought it would be more fitting. No doubt you have lots of questions. I heard what Father told you, but there's a lot more to it than that. Stories are rarely ever one-sided. We turn a few corners, and I do my best to keep to catch up. Nagi's demeanor is extremely different from than that. Different than I knew. I have some fright within me from our last meeting. A part of me fears that he might make a sudden move. But I don't blame you, Exodus. Wait, is it okay that I call you that? I think it fits you better, to be honest. Oh, you making a dish of my name? Father got to you first. It's a shame. Him and his people made a big impression. You're attached and less open-minded. I have flashbacks to the first time I visited Terra. Riley got to Keela, and Damien and Conrad got to me. At that time, we sided with opposite parties. I even thought about the co this correlation in my mind. It's a Bree! It's a Bree! It's a Bree! Hey, Bree! But it couldn't be as simple as that. It implies that there is no good or evil at play. Nagi attacked the Federation, he admitted this. And to top it all off, he tried to kill me. I have a reason for everything I've done. You, you sat, sat through Father's father story, story, Exodus. Exodus. I, I hope, hope that you can do the same for mine. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're almost, almost at the bridge. bridge. It, won't it won't be, be much longer, longer now. We can end this without violence. We turn a few corners and I see a large door. It's likely the entrance of, to the bridge of the ship. Nagi keeps walking and it opens upon his approach. I quickly enter after him, hoping it doesn't close. I knew one thing for sure, this is where it ended. You have reached the point of no return. You will no longer have the ability to save. Many scenes will start playing out of out in sequence. Ensure you have enough time to watch the finale. <laughs> okay, well, I have I have a lot of time. Let's do this shit. As soon as I enter, I see Nagi standing at the terminal. And thank God for that point of no return thing. I don't know what he's doing, but he sure does. His fingers tap away at the touch screen with expertise. After a moment, the windows seem to open. Actually, they fade into transparency. I'm welcomed into a, the void of space and absolute black. It's littered with less stars than I'd expect. It's, it's kind of beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? it? This, this is the edge of your reality plane. plane. You, you can, can see, see outside, outside, but that's, that's it. it. You don't have the technology to escape, nor the ability to see this far. You're the last, the first Earthling to witness this. All of those stars just out of reach. They're the Federation's core worlds. But what you're seeing is only a memory. They're so far away, this isn't accurate. That light is millions of years old. We've long since destroyed those worlds. Honestly, I'm a little conflicted. From here, they look amazing. But you can see their flaws up close. If I could only see them like this, I never would have destroyed them. They'd, they'd still glisten like this today. But every candle dims into nothingness. And there's a, there is also beauty in the darkness. Something that most people hate to admit. He rests his hands against the window and snickers. Snickers bar! Uh, I, it's not a sponsor. I guess he's overtaken by nostalgia at this sight. What the universe looked like before his onslaught. Then a moment later, he turns to me and smiles. I, I wish I could show you that darkness. Life is not as pure as people think. Those worlds shine with indecency. He takes a slow step towards me. I want to ready my blade, but I don't. I sense sorrow and regret in his words. I wasn't go he wasn't going to attack me, I could tell. I hate thinking about the past. It stirs up rage within my soul. But do you share the same rage as me? No. We were supposed to create a perfect world, but it wouldn't really be our world. 
it'd be handed over to the Federation. And what would happen to us after that? We'd likely get discarded, thrown away. We had no purpose other than to listen. At first, we didn't know that. We happily made Earth to be perfect. We believed it was our will to do so. But free will did not exist for us. We were only doing what we were told to, even if we didn't know it at the time. We grew curious about the future. This is where we confronted Father. He told us the truth about everything. We lashed out at him in rage. We shouldn't have we should have been free to live our lives. But instead he created us as slaves. He didn't deserve to live in peace. That is why we performed our ritual. We cursed Earth with all manner of flaws, death, disease, famine, you name it. He'd slowly watch his mission crumble. His scepter would be always out of reach. Nami and myself were able to break free, but we promised that one day we'd return. We'd kill him when, this was when his will was broken. That was when we embarked on our mission. We'd find the leader of the Federation. Then we'd kill them, breaking all shackles. They'd never be able to do this again. Condemn worlds to the servitude. The reality plane should have been free. The core worlds were the first thing we saw. They were the worst shape that we thought. Much more pathetic than Father led on. We touched down on one as soon as we could, but we were instantly greeted with violence. It was unfortunate, but we fought back. That's when we found out the truth. Our weapons were plagued as well, likely from the same ritual on Earth. As we killed them, we grew stronger. We could convert life into raw energy. Suddenly, our goal became more realistic. We began traversing all of these worlds, and we saw the Federation's true nature. They could barely sustain their own people. Their need for new energy was apparent, but none of the planes were successful. The Federation was living in its final days. You might think we're monsters, but our harvested harvesting was a display of mercy. These people were suffering too much. We'd use their energy in a righteous manner by destroying the Federation entirely. No more worlds would suffer because of them. As we harvested, we interrogated. We learned where the Federation was run. Then about its leader, the Imper Imper Imperator? Imperator. What the fuck is that? The fuck is that? We knew where we had to go. The world that the Imperator called home. What the fuck is an Imperator? Only there could we end the Federation. But we saved it for last, Texas. We wanted the Imperator to suffer, too. Much like Father would be at the same time. He'd see his Federation fall apart, and when he lost all hope, he'd die. Then the universe would be truly free. Oh, well. Our journey finally led us to the homeworld. We were all powerful and completely invincible. Sure enough. This world was a paradise. They weren't suffering like the other worlds. The Imperator obviously did this on purpose, ensuring that he was able to live happily. We met with him and had a long talk. He stood by his morals to the very end. These experiments were for the greater good. He was civil, which was unexpected. His experiments led to so much suffering. He was the biggest mass murderer in history. Therefore, his end was very fitting. We killed him, but showed him no mercy. He was destroyed by his own experiments. We should have been satisfied, but weren't. Was there something else we had to do? That's when we discovered the Terminus. The Federation knew that they were dying, so they no longer sat around waiting. They built a ship capable of reality travel. They wanted to visit their reality planes rather than waiting for them to break free. We seized this ship without hesitation. That's when we realized what to do next. The Imperator was not the true creator. Something or someone made the Imperator. The Federation didn't spawn from nothing. This entire universe was likely created. 
But what would hold such power? We needed to continue our harvest. But now we could visit the reality planes. We were no longer limited to core worlds. The power we could gather was infinite. But we need every bit of it. We'd be breaking out of the universe. Reality planes were nothing to us anymore. And the Federation was insignificant. There was an even greater target out there. So we did what we'd been doing forever. We started harvesting the reality planes. Our power grew with each successful harvest. That's when Terra piqued our interest. There seemed to be a massive power present. Not only that, it was rapidly growing. The temptation to harvest Terra was huge, but we decided to save it for last as well. We'd let the power grow as long as we could. And grow you did, Exodus. Nami and I harvested the universe, and somehow, your power rivaled that. It would definitely be enough to break free. That's when we decided to come to Terra. Nami was driven by her lust to kill father. And who was I to get in her way? She had a desire that was truly her own. She wasn't acting under any influence. So I let her do it, even if she died. Her final act would be her own choice. There was nothing more beautiful than that. I promised I would achieve our goal. That's why we destroyed the tavern. There'd be no need of it anymore. It was, a symbol it was symbolic of his father's failure. His hopes to see a connected universe. We had fun raising it to the ground. And that brings us to where we stand. On the cusp of a universal revolution. I want to find the All-Creator Exodus. Even if I have to travel forever. Even if a million universes get in my way. I will find them. And destroy them. I'll use the power to start over again. A new beginning for all of existence. Without the suffering I've witnessed. That is what I was truly made to do. I wasn't meant to be it, to make the perfect world. I was meant to make the universe of perfection. And you can help me, Exodus. Your power is vast and infinite. You don't need to follow Father's orders. His dream is less than ideal. His universe would be overpopulated. It would suffer in the exact same way. He'd have you undo all of my harvesting, bring back every world and every life. But that's not such a good thing. They lived a horrifying existence, and some of those people were truly evil. The Imperator, Imperator, fuck this word, Imperator, was living proof of that. Everything would be connected, sure. But would it be truly harmonious? Harmonious. Harmonious. The fuck is harmonious? Harmonious. Would it be truly harmonious? That is the question. I don't think that's the case, Exodus. There are worse people than me out there. Father would give them free reign. All in the name of a connected universe. That's why we destroyed the tavern. That's why that's another, there's another way to handle this. Something that works for us both. Lend me your energy, Exodus. I'll use it to leave this universe. But I'll close off Earth and Terra. Whatever I do won't affect you. These worlds will live just as they have. But we'll destroy the Ark completely. The worlds will be independent. There will be no more give and take. Terra can become a world of its own. It won't be connected to Earth anymore. Therefore, no more immigration. This will solve all of Terra's problems. Death will be permanent. Terra will be free. It won't exist solely to hold energy. You can give the citizens true freedom. This is so much to take in, I have to stop and think. So, Nagi ended up destroying the entire Federation? But it was suffering, so we, so we saw it as a mercy. Now he wants to see who created this universe. But only, the only way he can break out is with all of our power. The universe held in the blades, and my energy. But he's offering to leave Earth and Terra unharmed. Only if I give up all of Velasquez's ideals. I've seen life on Terra, though. It's not good. Was the rest of the universe truly that bad? 
Would I be releasing as much energy, as much suffering as he said? It seems that now, this is a battle of pure ideals. On one hand, I could guarantee Earth and Terra's safety. If we closed ourselves off, there'd be no risk at all. A connected universe was risky, but the reward great. It would also give us an opportunity to advance. There's no way I could decide this on my own. I, and I'd have to defeat Nagi to connect the universe. Otherwise, we'd admit a defeat of our own and hide. We'd live quietly, never knowing what could have been. I can see Nagi tremble with unease. I think he expected me to give in to his speech. But there's so many voices in my head, I can't. It's too unclear, too cloudy to pass judgment. I understand what's going on. The souls inside are conflicted once more. They don't know what action to take, right? I nod and tell him I'm sorry. I'd need lots of time to think about this. It doesn't need to come to that, Exodus. I have a better way to decide everything. A way to let our true selves decide. He turns his back to me and releases and returns to the terminal. I see him typing away at it much harder than before. I sense that he's trying to hide some frustration. Did he really expect to convince me so easily? After a while, he turns back towards me. The ship starts to move, pushing me back violently. I almost fall down, but grab onto a terminal. As this happens, Nagi gives me an evil smirk. I have learned one thing during our harvest. People are most open before their death. It's when we put things in perspective. You can learn a lot about another person, especially with a blade to their neck. So tell me, what do you truly want? He flourishes his blade and holds it out towards me. I instinctively do the same in turn, facing him. The ship is moving, our destination unknown to me. Nagi keeps that evil grin on his face, ready to kill. Our destination is Terra, a crash course! In fact, we'll hit it the castle directly. The fallout will obliterate everything! Let the blades speak of your resolve. If you can defeat me, then very well. You will make Father's dream a reality. But if you don't defeat me in time, We'll crash, and you'll die. Then I can use your power for myself. He lunges towards me and attempts to strike me down. I meet his sword halfway, locking us both in place. This music really reminds me of Kingdom Hearts. I gaze into his eyes. It seems we're both of equal strength. The blades stay in deadlock, not choosing sides. But there's a part of me that wants to defeat him. As it detects this desire, the gear on my blade spins. It gives me extra strength, and I finally overpower him! But he dodges with ease, moving to the side. After a moment, he attacks me once more in full force. I brace myself and hold out my blade in defense. When our swords clash, a white light flashes before us. Likely, this is a reaction to my spinning gear. Oh no, the energy is escaping! The blades were not meant to clash! Exodus, team your gear immediately! I don't listen to him, and I attack again. I needed this boost if I wanted to win. A white fl light flashes as I clash another time. But when it fades, I notice new stars glistening. A celestial light show is being born from the blade. Worlds long since harvested, finding new life. Don't, don't be foolish! No one do all of our work! Then neither, neither of us can achieve, achieve anything. anything! He starts to take a defensive stance. He was afraid of our swords connecting further. He dodges my attacks smoothly and with ease. I never thought such a man would display a grace. A part of me wants to stop the gear, but I don't. Now that I've tasted its power, it's all I need. Perhaps this is what Nagi felt when he used it as well. He continues to evade, and I need to switch things up. Flames start to engulf the windows of the bridge. We must be breaking into Terran atmosphere. The ship shakes. I could use this turbulence. Perhaps I'll be able to throw him off guard. Only a few minutes left, Exodus! I can dodge whatever you throw at me. There's no way you can win anymore. His baiting works, and I attack full force, but this time I do my best to trick him. In the middle of my slash, I lose my balance. He thinks he the, ship, the shaking of the ship overtook me, but he was the one who got caught off guard. He tries using my momentary confusion to attack me, but like he did before, I dodge him with ease. I turn around to drive the sword through his back! He 
yells out a grunt and falls to his knees. He remains there, panting heavily. The floor fills with his blood, pitch black. He bows his head down, as if admitting defeat. I take a few steps back, my blade left inside of him. The puddle of blood on the floor grows in size. I watch on in awe, expecting him to pass out. Congratulations, Congratulations Exodus. Exodus. You've, You've done, done it. it. You've it's proven how stupid you really are. He laughs, and as he rises to his feet, it was all an act! He reaches behind himself and pulls out my blade. No, shit! Now he has both swords, and he wasn't even hurt. For a moment, I regret underestimating him. We, we aren't, aren't so, so quick, quick to hurt, hurt Exodus. Exodus. We, we are born, born but we, we are both born from world stones. stones. I'm surprised you thought it was over. But now I hold both blades. Infinite power courses through my veins. There's no way you can hope to win this. He walks towards me, and I retreat in fright. But eventually, my back hits a wall. This is exactly, this is exactly like a, the ballroom incident. I look around in panic, trying to find a way out. No one can save you now. In fact, why should I even wait? I can unleash your power right now! A few more steps, and he's right in front of me. I know there's no use in trying to run. I tried doing the same thing back when Endymion died, but this time, I wouldn't get sent back by Ryo. I often wondered, wondered if there was, if there was an afterlife. On the off chance that there is, give all my regards when you see him. Ah, oh, fuck! And with that, he plunges both blades inside of me. I scream and, as I'm pinned to the wall of the terminus. My vision falters, and I look at, out at the bridge window. The Terran surface grows bigger with each second. That's, That's the, the world, world that wanted your help. You, you could have saved them, you know. I gave, gave you a perfectly valid option, option. but instead you, you chose to fight me. You chose a battle you knew you'd lose, and they will all suffer for it. Look at those beautiful forests, Exodus. It's the last time you'll ever see them, or any Terran for that matter. Souls will continue to travel there, but they will only find hell. Engulfed in fire, burning for eternity. He pushes the blades deeper and makes the gears spin. I can feel my essence draining faster than ever before. He was right. I could have agreed with him back then. But now my last moments alive will be full of regret. My vision slowly starts to fade. It seems he'll activate our power in the last second. At the moment of impact, he'd leave this universe. I'd die and everyone on Terra would suffer forever. That can't be the ending. But just like the ballroom, it wasn't over yet. However, instead of fear, these events bring hope. Not so fast, Nagi! Well, how the fuck did you get here? He quickly turns to address the intruder. He's caught off guard as, as they've never met. But it's good to see a familiar face after this. It's, and a part of me knows exactly what will happen next. Akron, do it now! While Nagi is confused, Ryo makes his move. He dashes towards me and pulls out one of the swords. Then he returns to the center of the bridge, smirking. He points the blade at Nagi, completely determined. So, we finally meet. Velasquez's creations, together at last. He sure screwed up the first time around. You're the other one, then. You fooled my plans in the ballroom. Brother, do you have a death wish? Nagi turns to me and tries to take the second blade, but before he can get to me, he's stopped. Going somewhere? Ikun quickly removes the other blade. I fall to the ground in a puddle of my own blood. But they have both swords, free to kill Nagi! They stand there, pointing both towards him. You two, explain yourselves! I demand you tell me what's going on! Like you did to all the others you killed? Don't make me laugh, you don't deserve it! Today, we erase a scourge from the universe! Ryo lunges forward, stabbing Nagi straight through. The larger man stumbles back, groaning in pain. Akron, let's end this! Destroy the cause of so much suffering! And give a brighter future to everyone! Couldn't have said it better myself! You know, I thought I won the battle, but now I know this is truly the end. Follows after Ryo and stabs Nagi as well. They both look at each other and give a firm nod. 
They activate the gears and Nagi screams in agony. You fools! You cannot defeat me! I am the embodiment of death! A force more powerful than anything! Ikrin simply laughs. And I'm the embodiment of life. For the first time, it has prevailed. A new force will govern the universe. A white light engulfs everything I, I can't see, but I can feel energy, and then a lack of it. Almost as if Nagi was now a part of the blades. Had they truly defeated the man who created Earth? I bring myself to my feet and my knees tremble. A. I call out to Ryo and Agrin, hoping they're alive. A. Perhaps their energy was put into the blades as well. A. Nope, they're there. But when the light subsides, I see that's not the case. They both tore, turn to face me, wearing huge smiles. They had teamed up and done the unthinkable. They destroyed Nagi, ended his twisted journey. It's not over yet, William. It's time to unleash your power. Akron, just like we practiced. They turn and point both swords at me, but I sense no hostility within them. No, oh, yeah, it's pointing swords at someone. No, it's not, it's not hostile at all. It was finally time to bring this to an end. I'd live out I'd live out the purpose I was created for. I'll do this for everyone's freedom. No one will get stuck in the cycle of despair. He stabs me with his blade and I feel a surge of power. And I'll do this for everyone's happiness. No more will death triumph over life. Akron follows suit, plunging his sword within me. Here, with the ability to change history, we'll bring a hope out, a hopeful future. William, we believe in you! They push the blades deeper, but it doesn't hurt. Instead, I feel power like I've never felt before. It was time to change history, make things better. I look deep inside, finding out how much power I had. With all of it, I'd create a, the best possible reality. And how much power, but how much power did I have? And what could I do? This was a culmination of every action I ever took. All of your choices have led to this. Well, it would be kind of fucking sucky of or everyone to go through all this just for me to side with Nagi, so... Restore worlds and open connections, bitch! Lock and load! <sighs> I hope this is the right choice! Gah! Oh shit, the music's fading. I can feel the power within me. I can do this! I'd unleash every life, every world within these blades. And I'd use the power within me to connect them. A shared universe, just like Velasquez wanted. Okay, we're siding with Velasquez. Was that the right choice? I nod at them as they plead for a better reality. The gears spin and everything fades to white. But I can still see. I close my eyes, embracing what's to come. I knew that my journey had finally come to an end. And I also knew that I'd never open my eyes again. But when they did... They'd see the future I created. A future built on the foundation of loss and suffering. But a future that would never experience it again. For I was able to return those who perished. By my hands, all of this suffering would be undone. And the galactic community would unite and prosper. Epilogue! Epilogi! Epilogu! So this is the end! Holy shit! We're in the throne room. With the rewriting of history, Terra was different. Rather than being isolated, it was part of a community. Reality planes no longer existed, and everyone was free. But this brought with it a host of new dangers as well. You want to travel to the fringe worlds? I'm sorry, but I think I may have misheard. You know how dangerous they are, Dimian. Of course I do, Velasquez. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> I changed Velasquez's voice from being the super deep voice to being pretty much Endymion's voice once he died, and now they both have the same voice! Fuck! Of course I do, Velasquez. But threats must be taken seriously. We've been tipped off, a potential attack. I can't stand by and watch this. I c it, could, it could injure galactic stability. Surely I can request a short leave. Nobody remembered what Terra was like before the change. Nami and Nagi were wiped from the annals of history, but so too would the, ch would, would the child of Exodus be forgotten. For death in suspension meant losing more than life. Velasquez assembled a small task force he could rely on. 
He could, he, they'd help protect Terra's standing in the galaxy. But so much had changed, and things were different. People who were once close might not even meet. Then what does your protege think? I can't force them into this situation. We need their input as well, Endymion. Of course. Endymion turns to the side and calls for his partner. His input was just as valuable to the king. Oh shit, really? I thought it would be Conrad. Endymion is correct, my lord. This threat is not like the others. It's not just Taro that could be affected. I would humbly request our leave as well. I am in no position to order you around, but know that we could save many lives. Hmm. Velasquez well, strokes his chin in deep thought. I could easily send our ambassadors. Would diplomacy not avert this crisis? I'm afraid not, and nobody could know that we left. It would be off the books, secret. Subterfuge, some would say. Ruling Terra required more care than ever before. One decision could one decision, one decision could send ripples across the galaxy, and Velasquez's decisions were always under scrutiny. Every world was watching the other. No one was alone. Are you sure that you could keep this a secret? I would hate for our world to suffer. Our reputation is special to me, Righty. I am confident in our ability. Very well. I trust you. Tell me more about this threat. I'd like to know the scope of it all. Wow. So what of Conrad? Oh, he's okay. Velasquez and his task force focused on galactic issues. His ambassadors, however, handled things much smaller. They represented Terra and the Galactic Senate. Issues such as trade and immigration were their concern. They want to send us more refugees. Have we not already taken all we can? I don't know if I can agree with this choice. Oh my god, really? But the people of Albea Prime need help. Their crisis is our opportunity dusk. This is where we can afford to barter. What do we need from them? Besides, we can't... won't we come off as greedy? Of course not, it's our decision! We'd be, we'd be far from the first world to do it, as, and the local export, ex export sells for a lot. Do you think a tithe would be acceptable? That's exactly what I was going for. Open door, sell Bay of Prime for a prize. We sell their goods and our economy booms. We can't just offer our shelter for free. People would take advantage of us. Velasquez can have the final say. Very well, but you can't be forgetting. Our trip to the Senate is approaching. We need to handle this in a swift manner. Yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. I'm packing all my stuff next week. I hope they like the, our ideas for the... Hope they like ideas this time. Uh... Oh, this is Player's House. Every year the Galactic Senate would gather together. They'd share ideas and vote for the betterment of all. Meeting on their on the core worlds, they'd they held deliberations. But it wasn't just stuff for the larger things that needed ruling. Every town on Terra had an elected governor. They were they were given enough power to rule on their own. This was so Velasquez and his team could relax. Managing their galactic standing was more than enough. Oh, he's the governor now! A motion to decrease the price of produce? I wasn't aware we were overcharging. What do you think we should do? Oh, it's Kaboo! It might not be as expensive to you, Father! Ah! Oh! <laughs> but not everybody has the same standards. There are people who struggle on Terra. I would lower it, but not by too much. We don't want to sell ourselves short. Should we use other towns as a guide? That's a great idea, my son. Would you be willing to take that trip? Uh, we'd be able to price more competitively. I'd love to do that, actually. I'd get to visit Kalen in his home. I haven't seen him in a very long time. Very well. Then it's decided. But there's no need to leave just yet. We have quite a few motions to look over. Aw, oh, look at this. They're all working together. Oh, and the tavern's back! Many were pushed apart in unexpected ways, but thanks to change, many were also brought together. However, they'd never know that things had changed. To them, their lives had always been this peaceful. Wait, let me get this straight, Trish. King Velasquez offered you a job? 
Yeah, I was just as shocked as you are. I mean, can you believe that? This, can you even believe this is true? Well, no. And, but probably for different reasons. Are you gonna accept his offer? Of course! This is the best thing that's ever happened. I'll definitely get to per per perfect my art, and I'll take make sure to advertise your tavern. Oh, there's no need for that. Don't want you breaking any rules. We'll handle things on our own. I guess you're right. I did put up a now here now hiring sign though. Figured you'd need some extra help. Thanks. That was really nice of you. I appreciate everything you done for us. Just then, someone knocks on the tavern door. Hey, if you'll excuse me, Trish. He leaves the conversation and answers the door. A friendship that lasted a lifetime would form that day. Oh, hey, look at him! Welcome to the Wayfarer's Tavern, sir. What can I do for you on this fine day? Oh, hey there. Uh, I saw a job posting outside, actually. I was uh, wondering if it's still available. Oh, look at you! I guess this is just regular old Terra. Looks like a set piece from Life of Brian, though. Um, while the others stayed in Riley, others moved away. Terra was now a bustling world, full of opportunity. But even if there was distance, many remained united. Kaboo, it's so great, good to see you again. I was just about to write you. Oh my god. You fucker. That scared the shit out of me. Can't believe you managed to surprise me. Fucking hell, that was my alarm. Just tell me it's three o'clock. I need to eat breakfast. I'm gonna eat breakfast as soon as I'm done with this. He hugs his friend and they share a moment of joy. They didn't know why, but they became they became great friends, as if something inside them called them to each other. Perhaps remnants of their tragedy had stayed with them. Kaylin, not for so, not for so long. People are starting to stare, <laughs> but it's good to see you too, my friend. He embraces Broken and they both wear large smiles. So what brings you here, Kaboo? Surely it's business of some sort. Yeah, you're right. But it requires your input, actually. Player wants to reevaluate some pricing. Oh, well, I can help you with that. I can... I do the same thing with my boss. I knew you'd never let me down. So, this is a matter of produce. Citizens think we're overcharging. They walk down the street, staying close as they talk. Oh, that's definitely a tough one. That kind of stuff is a necessity. It's easy to charge more for that. We dealt with that for a while ago, too. But I think we settled at a nice price. At least the citizens seem to enjoy it. So much has changed, you know. Getting a new governor will do that. But he's been very popular with the people. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. Your town elected a new leader. Would you say his name was again? It's Riley. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's Riley. Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck me. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Okay. It seems in this new world even enemies were friends. Souls that were lost had the chance to shine again. This changed the direction of many people's lives, including those who that would otherwise cling to the past. Wait, I actually did it correctly? Trish always told me it was wrong. I'm really confused now, PB. I guess we did have our differences. It's just cleaning glass, though. If you damage them, we can buy them more. She did most of the damaging, actually. I wonder if the king saw. I wonder what the king saw in her. I guess she made good drinks or something. Maybe we'll never know. Velasquez rules in mysterious ways. Just focus on the tavern, all right? All right. So what do I do next? I mean, the glass is uh, is clean for now. I saw I swept the floors and wiped the windows. You've done way too much, PB. F fidget. Fuck. You've done way too much, fidget. Just relax and take a breather. I don't want you burning yourself out. Just then another visitor arrives in the tavern. They gently knock on the door and Fidget smiles. Home a little earlier today? Don't worry, I'll get it, PB. He runs to the door, leaving his brother behind. He opens it and the smiling face of his mother awaits. He leaps into her arms and he softly kisses her cheek. It was an embrace that he never wanted to end. It seemed like that in this moment everything was fine. Not just for Fidget, but for the galaxy as a whole. Terra went on to live a long and prosperous life, and those who lived there were given happiness, the better future that they than they always deserved. 
Endymion and Rydy went on to carry out their mission. They performed with honor and stopped a massive threat. Feeling guilty, however, Velasquez came clean. He told the Galactic Senate what they had planned. Instead of punishment, however, they were rewarded. The Galactic Senate wanted to hire their services. Together, they founded a new branch of government, agents dedicated to covertly, uh, co covertly diffusing threats. They would forever be remembered as their founders. Aww, oh, that's awesome. Endymion and Rydy became a vital part of history. After their passing, they were used as a measure. Everyone aimed to do so as much good in the galaxy as them. Dusk and Sam continued to serve as Terra amb Terra's ambassadors. Their time was devoted to enhancing quality of life. Terra's standing in the galactic community was high. Happiness and peace were commonplace on this world. Eventually, they were asked to serve the core worlds. Over time, they came to rule the Galactic Senate. It was their job to rule over the annual deliberations. Henceforth, their ideas were never discarded again. <laughs> Player and Kaboo continued to govern the town of Riley. Uh, uh, I just realized that Riley and Riley are very similar. Uh, it became known for its peaceful and affordable life. But as time passed, old, old age took, a, took the life of Player. His son ran in the election and secured leadership. He maintained the town his father worked to create, but in the end, he was able to make it even better. Riley became a home for the more upper-class citizens, a far cry from its more humble beginnings in poverty. Conrad was hired and began working at the tavern. He served out his days as a loyal denizen of Riley. He lived a small, happy life of complete peace. He'd never experienced the danger of battle again. PB2 lived a quiet life of happiness. Running the tavern with Conrad, they made a fortune. As Riley rose in rank, so too did their revenue. Eventually, it became the most luxurious bar in Terra. Trish served Velasquez for the rest of her days. Over time, with and with practice, she perfected her art. She was responsible for lots of tourism to the castle. Everybody wanted to taste her beautiful concoctions. And to them, the castle gates remained for over, forever open. Kalen served with Riley for many years to come, but much like Player, old age got the better of him. Running for office, Kalen succeeded his boss. Him and his best friend had become governors. They promptly united both their towns as one, and in, in the future it would be known as New Riley. Together they led their home into prosperity. They were remembered for many years to come. Fidget remained under the tutelage of his mother. She was considered one of the brightest minds in ter on Terra. However, this time, the Exodus Project never happened. She was not claimed, and they lived together in joy. It was responsible for m she was responsible for many technological advances. As they and as they got older, she taught her son her ways. She did pass away, but Fidget was able to let go. She went on to continue her work and aid the galaxy. It was a harsh truth, but nobody could live forever. This even rang true for the immortal King Velasquez. He was remembered as Terra's greatest leader, taught in every school for generations to come. In that sense, maybe he was immortal. The annals of time forget never forget such men. Terra went on to experience an eternal peace. They lived forever in harmony with the galaxy. Well, what of Earth? What of the people of Earth? Earth, however, would remain largely unchanged. It was introverted, concerned with its own matters. It would be a while before they entered the community, but life still changed and all for the better. With the sacrifice of Exodus, tragedies were averted. This left things to free to proceed as they were meant to. Hype escalated as the launch of Cleese's tour arrived, but due to these changes, there was only one winner. Absolutely not. I forbid it. I can't just let you go out alone. Remember what happened the last few times? Oh, hey, it's Cleese! Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, I, I can't come up with a new voice right now. But Singe, I really want to. I should be there to greet him personally, especially after all the pop star he drank. 
You'll have plenty of time to meet him, but it will have to be later on. Rook and Jade will be picking him up. And I'm sorry, but that's final. You know the, how the press can get, Clays. I don't want you in the spotlight just yet. Clays slumps down in his chair, sad at this news. In his mind, he should greet the contest winner. After all, this entire thing was his idea. Fine. But you should let them take the limo. At least do that for me, all right? Otherwise, I'll be it'll be boring for them. I don't think you heard me properly. We must avoid undue attention. We'll save it all for the tour launch. Please, just let them take the limo. Imagine if you won such a huge contest. You'd let you'd be let down if you got anything else. You're the one who said this was a great PR. Don't you do you want to seem cheap to everybody? Then by all means, send a tiny car. Singe groans, resting his face in his hands. Fine, I'll give them the limo. But I'm not doing this happily. At least let the record show that. Yeah, but you don't do anything happily. So this is just typical Singe, right? An awkward silence ensues before they both start laughing. But seriously, let's focus here. You should probably tell Anumi what's up. He loves hanging out in that limo, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. He'll be so happy to go along. Who's the contest winner again? His name is Keela. Ah, so the actual Keela actually won! Yay! As many things changed, some new bonds were forged. Wounds of the past would never again be reopened. They worked with fervent effort as the tour approached, but even the most dedicated workers deserve some rest. So I guess this is it, huh? Our last day to relax and unwind? Tomorrow the tour starts in fours. Yeah, you said it, Jade. I wish we had more time to relax. These, there, things are going to get pretty busy. It won't be that bad in the end. Traveling the world is fun in prospect, and you know, we get to do it together. He smiles at Jade, and she smiles back. So why did you pick this place? You do know that I hate water. You're up to something, aren't you? No way, I'm offended. When, when would I have ulterior motives? I'm a man of pure heart and spirit. With an impeccable sense of humor, too. Come on, Rook, spill the beans. Rook w walks to the railing and looks at the in the water. He waves Jade over and she joins him observing. Again, I hate water. <laughs> I can think of something that hates it more. Something that's no longer needed either. Oh, the tablet! Oh yeah, what is that? Drogue smiles and walks to the opposite railing. With a running start, he throws the tablet into the water. It hits far away and he can hear its impact loudly. Rook, what did you do that for? He turns around and embraces Jade with a smile. She's caught off guard and starts giggling. A blush appears on her face with a sudden, at the sudden advance. Because I have everything I need right here. They share a kiss alone on the quiet dock. Their only witness, the slowly setting sun. It brings with it the end of a special day. What of a Claire? What happened to her? I thought, okay. And the beginning of something even more special. The history was changed, many things stayed the same. This rang true with the guitarist Shock and Rocker. They were relaxing backstage, dusting off rewards, and living with the hope that they might get even more. So, are you ready for the big show? I've been practicing over t overtime now. Lots of critics to impress this time. Yeah, I suppose I'm ready. But I don't care about the critics. They take the fun out of everything. I play because it's my passion, Shock. I don't do it to get evaluated. To, uh, to me, the, the music brings happiness. What? Are you calling me vain or something? I play to impress the entire world. Not everybody is as talented as we are. Of course not. You're not vain. Some people like that kind of validation. I'm just saying it's the sha- I'm just saying- I just like staying in the shadows. And I'm grateful to have this chance. He cracks open a pop star and starts chugging. He swallows it and lets out a refreshing sigh. Oh, I'm sorry, would you like one? <laughs> no thanks. I quit a while back now. 
Oh, look at that. Even he quit his fucking thing of a bob. Is this a dance room? While some remained in the shadows, others found light. But it was under much better circumstances than before. With a chance to debut her skills, Daz practiced hard. Yes, Numi, I get to sing for everyone. I wrote a song, and I'll do my best. But I'm not the greatest piano player. <laughs> That's so cool! I'm proud of you! You know, people call my brother stubborn, but he fights f for things that help others. Just like he did to help me. Daz smiles, knowing the story of Anumi's adoption. He practices her dance moves while he watches in awe. Wow, Daz, you're really good at that. Not even Clays could pull that off. Put that move off, I should say. Don't forget me when you're a celebrity. She laughs, but she's completely, she's secretly hopeful. Deep inside, she hopes to impress at the concert. Her piece in, her piece in, her piece is somber, showing off her potential, composed from memories deep inside her heart. I don't think I'll ever forget you, Anumi. Something tells me you're here to stay, but I need to practice now. Is that okay? Of course. Don't even worry about it. I have to go and uh, take a trip anyway. I'm picking up the contest winner. Wow, that's pretty exciting stuff. Would you tell them I said hello? Sure, but under one condition. You name it. I want you to teach me how to dance. One day I'll take over for my brother, and I want to be just as famous as you two. Aww. The future of many were headed in uncertain directions. However, some were left to embrace their destiny. Arriving in Tokyo, they wanted to protect any, everyone, but they knew not what grand fate awaited them. Fuck you, Moto here, live in, from Tokyo! Breaking news, folks! A oh, new visitor, the CEO of Armstrong Incorporated! What? Uh, I want to thank you so much for giving us your time. The viewers will have lots of questions, especially about the nature of your visit. Oh, shit! Unfortunately, it's a secret. You understand what my business is like. But nobody should fear for their safety. Words of wisdom, if I ever heard them. Tell us, Akron, about your situation. You were thrust into leadership so fast. Do you have anything to say about that? The viewers wonder about your inheritance. That and the disappearance of your family. He pushes the microphone towards Akron's face. Akron pulls back, clearly feeling violated. No comment, I'm afraid. There is far too much speculation. I'm just focusing on performing admirably. As mysterious as ever, I see. Very well, I certainly trust you. Armstrong has done much, so much good. America is much safer in your hands. As soon, and soon, maybe Japan will be too. We'll await a more formal announcement. Akron nods and smiles, happy that he backed off. He wasn't about to reveal the reason he was in Tokyo. It was something he'd announce at a later date. However, he knew Japan would love what he had to say. I hope. The debut of the world tour came closer and closer, and on the best day of his life, Kila arrived. But this time around, he was more than a new man. Winning this contest, winning this contest gave him a large sense of hope. Are you sure you don't need any help? Please tell me, it's no trouble at all. I'd hate for you to hurt yourself, Kila. Oh no, please don't worry. I've been through much worse, trust me. This is the best I've felt in years. He coughs, placing a hand over his mouth. He carries w with him a device that assists his breathing. Had things been any other way, Kila would have been bedridden. But winning the contest meant the world to him. You really should have brought a guardian. Didn't you say you had a twin brother? I'm really so worried for your safety, Kila. Please don't coddle me, Rook. And yeah, I do have a brother. He was even prepared to come for me. I know I'm really sick, but it's okay. I'll make sure not to cause any trouble. This will just be the best year of my whole life. Rook smiles and he leads Keela to the exit. That he had an ever-watchful eye on his sickly friend. He'd, bo guarantee, he'd guarantee both his safety and his fun. Deep down inside, this feels familiar to him. Well then, you ready for some fun? Please even fought for it to get you a limo. You'll be you will be going on a tour in style. Wow, that's fantastic! He really did that for me. I can't wait to thank him in person. He coughs some more at his overexcitement. 
but he knew he wouldn't be sick for much longer. Now with all this hope and all this support, it would play a vital role in his speedy recovery. Oh, that's great! With everything lined up, it was finally time. Clay stood backstage trembling in fear. Daz joined him, scared of her big debut. Shock and Rocker, however, enjoyed the shadows. What if they don't like me? I put my heart and soul into this song. I'd be crushed if they didn't applaud. Oh man, I feel the same way. I had some nightmares last night, too. After the song, they were just silent. That's horrible. Just play it to the just play up the crowd, Daz. Tell them how good they are. Say you love all of them. Do I say Tokyo is the best city ever? Only if you want it to be only if you want to be cliche. <laughs> but I guess we're no stranger to those. It's old fashioned, but it works. You're singing a slower song, right? Ask them to take out their lighters. It's uh, great it's great to unite the audience. Yeah, it is a slower song. I hope it don't ruin your energy. I wouldn't worry about it, Daz. I'm retiring after this tour anyway. This is your chance to prove yourself. Retiring? Oh, you must be hearing things. I didn't say anything of the sort. Anyway, I think they'll call us out soon. <laughs> oh, you fucking... I'm so nervous. Clay Specs has a hand on Daz's shoulder. He recalls when he was in her exact situation. But in the end, everything worked out. They laugh at this anxiety when it was all over. Listen, Daz, everything will be fine. I've heard your voice, it's beautiful. Now let's go sing our hearts out. When the names were called, they ran out on stage. The crowd was pumped, applauding almost immediately. They went on to give the performance up for, their, for the ages. For once, everything was perfect in their lives. They'd never know the true cost of that perfection. There he is. The world tour went on to launch with a big bang. It was talked about for years to come, breaking records. But true to his word, Clayce retired when it was over. However, he still remained in the industry he loved. He continued to tour with Daz as she performed, all the while teaching his brother Anumi how to sing. With, Daz dan with Daz's dancing lessons, he was sure to succeed. Singe went on to manage idols for the rest of his days. After Clay's, it was Daz, and it never ended. He was devoted to the businesses well into his old age. He was devoted to the business well into his old age. However, one day his old age got the better of him. He left behind a legacy in the entertainment industry. He'd never be he'd never be directly remembered for any of it. To the world, he was a man behind the curtain. But he loved the peace, and he was fine with that. Shock and Rocker always wouldn't always remain in the back. When Clay's retired, they started their own careers. Their popularity would even surpass some pop idols, but until they retired, they always topped the charts. Daz lived up to the bargain, teaching Anumi to dance. When Clay's retired, Anumi was already well trained. It was all, it, w it only seemed natural that he he'd follow his brother. Becoming a pop idol, he also toured the world. Huh. After Singe's passing, he needed to take a ch he needed to make a change. He set his eyes on managing and took Singe's place. How else could he repay the man that he saw his father? He maintained a legacy he worked so hard hard to create. Oh, we get one for Fukumoto. <laughs> Fukumoto quickly gained popularity for his unique style. Eventually he was offered a job with a huge network. Moving to America, he pursued his biggest dream. And he never again resorted to tabloid journalism. Thank God. <laughs> Akron was in Tokyo to test a new product. It was a way to subdue without any chance of harm. Akron, uh, Armstrong Incorporated became enforcers of peace. And they would never again use death as a tool. He was applauded for the peace he gave Earth. But as most do, he sets his sights even higher. One night, fate took him in a drastically new direction. From that day on, he was never seen again. Wonder what that was. Rook and, Jade Rook and Jade's love blossomed as they toured the world. 
Each new stop brought several romantic hotspots. And they served Singe loyally until his fateful passing. After that, they wed into a life of peace. We just don't know anything about Eclair then, I guess, eh? After Clay's retired, Daz took the spotlight. She was the idol to beat, gaining a massive following. World tour after world tour, she kept up the momentum. Platinum records and a lifetime of glory awaited her. But she knew it was mostly thanks to Clay's. His decision to step down actually raised her up. She'd be forever thankful for what he had done. And they remained friends for the rest of their lives. Keela's hope was renewed, and he was as happy as ever. After the tour ended, he remained friends with everyone. He beat his illness and lived a long, happy life. Him and his brother Eddie were henceforth inseparable. They found several chari they founded several charity organizations together. No one would ever suffer like Keela did. At least, that was their end goal in life. And over time, they helped find many cures. Earthwood remained isolated for a long time to come. They didn't have the technology to join the galaxy, but this never stopped them from living happily, and for the rest of its existence, Earth was peaceful. I guess Eclair just never fucking happened. I mean, we got fucking resolve for fuck you Moto, but not Eclair. I don't know how I saw all of this, to be honest. As far as I knew, I'm, I was supposed to be dead. But I smiled as I saw the future I was I left behind. It seems that in the end, everyone was happy. And that's it! Oh, that's the credits! That's it, guys! That's it for Major Minor! I don't know if this song is copyrighted or not, so I'm just gonna talk over it. Thank you all very much for watching this series. I... I fucking, when, you know, it, when Clay's gave me the Steam code for this game, I really didn't know what to expect, uh, because it, it was really the, uh, oh, oh, and this is where it gives care, uh, the credit to the, uh, people who, um, actually have, these are people's personas, a lot of the, these characters in the games. <laughs> That's so, it's so cool. It's so cool. And Keela belongs to Eddie. Oh, that, oh that's cool. I know the, uh, the person who, um, uh, who, uh, has Kaylin actually found my videos and was, like, glad that I didn't give them a weird voice or whatever. <laughs> that is so cool. Ryo belongs to Ryo. That's cool. <laughs> a lot of work that went into this game and I'm really looking forward to seeing this Winds of Change which is the next game that Clace is working on oh look at that your character's a little oh oh that's so cool and lastly I want to thank you the player you supported my dream to continue creating games this game is dedicated to all of you oh that's so sweet Oh, that's, su that's such a sweet thing to put at the end of the credits there. And they're, they're still working. They're still doing... Clay's is still doing Winds of Change, and, you know, I'm just I'm just glad. I'm, I'm glad for them. I'm glad that I got to play this game. Finn! Finn! Finn Balor! Finn Balor! Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay. I get it. You're just gonna the slowest fade in in the world. Fine, I'll keep talking. So, I really like this game. I think it uh, very interesting. Very, I don't know. I don't even know how to put it. Like, I'm just glad that apparently we got the the true ending. I hope I got the right one. It feels like the right one, but um, it's hard to talk with this fucking thing in my ear. So I'm just gonna close. I'm just gonna take that off. But anyway. Um, I really enjoyed the game. I'm really glad I got to play it. It's just the screen forever, I guess. I don't know. I can't get rid of it. But, uh... Oh, no, it's fading. What does it say? What happens now? Oh! There's more stuff! There's stuff after the credits! 
I tremble. My entire body is overwhelmed with sensation. I have no idea what just happened or where I am. I pant heavily and take in my surroundings. It's the terminus, but wasn't it on a crash course? Hey there, William. I'm glad to see you awake. When you blacked out, I feared the worst. Ryo stands before me and offers me his hand. I take it without hesitation, and he helps me stand. I look out the window of the bridge, astonished. There are billions of stars shining together. Look at all those worlds, William. It was you who gave them life again. Connected to live in harmony forever. He smiles as we walk toward the window. I press my hand against it, looking at what I did. I changed reality, united an entire galaxy. But for some reason, I saw the future of everything. Yes, I expected as much. Your sight has been twisted. No longer limited to two worlds. You can now view the you can view the entire galaxy, both its current and future state. Just think of what we're capable of. Maybe we should go and get everybody. It might be good to have some company. And honestly, I grew fond of them all. I'm not sure of how to respond to that. I mean, we did go through a lot together, but the future I witnessed was so happy. If I change things up, it could cause tragedy. Besides, I'm not even sure if they would want, if they would remember me. So much has changed, I wasn't on any of their minds. If I, if we went to recruit them, they'd call us insane. Rather than acknowledging my fear, he gives me a gift. The two blades merge into one, but it looks different, don't you think? Like its source of power has changed? It's the sword I held earlier, but purified. Instead of black and red, it's colored differently. It now wears an ornate white and a beautiful gold. Or black and blue, right? Uh, I feel like it could be the source of good in the galaxy. We have lots of exploring to do, and we can continue changing history, but it would be nice to do with friends. So tell me, what should we do? Should we get the group back together, or should we leave things as they are? Think long and hard before I answer Ryo. Seems I held the future of everyone in my hands. It was time for me to decide what happened next. What? Well, what the fuck? I don't know. Uh, things seem so great the way they were. I don't want to fuck it up. So let's, I'd rather not change what I saw. Well then, I trust your judgment. But William, we have lots to talk about. Luckily, I know where we can waste time. Soon I fell, I feel an all too familiar sensation. I embrace it, filled with joy that I survived. I feel, and filled with wonder at this galaxy's potential. Guitars? Oh. Oh. Oh, it's just... My game is happening slowly. <laughs> Music! It's just this it's just the logo with music. I can't sit here forever, I gotta go to work. I haven't taken my pills yet. I gotta do that. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Huh? And the game's done. Alright! So um I don't Thank you. I don't know if getting the game back together was the right choice or not. So I'm sorry if after all of that I just chose the wrong thing. Or if maybe that was the right thing. But it seemed like the right future, man. I don't want to fuck it up. So uh, thank you all very much for watching this series. Uh, and I gotta go eat breakfast. So until next time, I've been the Trained Up Professional. Speaking for the voices on my head when I say, fare thee well. Bye, everyone!